In this segment, we're going to discuss how to manage the sales pipeline in properties. As a quick overview, we're going to discuss creating desired lists, how to use custom notes, how to use property tags, how to actually manage accountability for our team, and then some sample ideas for managing the sales pipeline itself. We're going to be discussing how to work within properties, but before that, let's talk about the bigger picture. So your administrator for Aspire can go into your list and you can actually manage your pipeline in the way that works for you. So if you go into your property status, you can see there's some defaults such as customer, past customer, prior bid and prospect that are standard, but you can make changes to how you walk through the statuses of a customer, whether you call it a cold prospect or bidding or an opportunity to propose or a lead or whatever it might be. That gives you that freedom to manage your specific sales process. Coming back out to Aspire, we're going to go straight into properties and we're going to look at a specific list that I put together here. This one I just called sales pipeline for the entire branch. And you can see what happened here is we have it grouped by that status. So whether it's bidding or cold prospect or past customer. So these are all of our potential sales, however you group those by those statuses. And the one important thing to know is that your sales team will manage this. They move those statuses from one to another. Some of the key things I want to see is property. Uh, if there's a budget that you know of while you're interested in this property, the current status, of course, the account owner name, the industry, who's the primary contact or decision maker. And then down here, this is very important, your next activity, last activity. And then, of course, you can create an appointment or a task or an email right from here if there's an email available. So next and last activity is critical to have in your display. Of course, you can change your displays if you choose to. Another option is maybe I want to actually group this by account owner. You can see this one, I have it by status and then by account owner. Maybe I want to flip that around and I want to group it the other way and actually put the account owner name first and I can group it that way. So I can see now here's Andrea Miller, one of my account owners, and here's what she has in her pipeline and then Benjamin and Bill and so on. And I can see each one of my account managers for the entire branch. That's just one option to look at. Inside a property, let's go into this Hallmark corporate headquarters as an example. We do most of this management up here in the pencil. And this is where your sales team will spend a lot of their time making sure that this is accurate. If the property status changes, we have to change that, of course. Down at the bottom of the screen, we want to point out that these are custom notes that you can create. On the note screen here, who has access to this can add and change these custom notes. So they can be a checkbox, they can be an actual list that you put together what it is that you're looking for by creating the list itself. So you can do all kinds of things. Maybe you're looking to see if it's a hardscape or landscape job, something more about it, potential competitors, does a cleanup is needed, so on and so forth. Lots of different options that you guys get to choose to manage your sales pipeline. Also in this, we can go to the second tab, which is very important as well, and we can look at tags. Now tags allow you to also manage your pipeline and search by different things. So maybe it's a green prospect or a snow prospect or snow takeoffs required, whatever tags you want to create. Now while the notes was easy to create right there in that page, the tags would have to go into your admin tab and then actually add a tag of whatever it is that you choose. The great part about tags and custom lists is when you go back to your property search, and how you actually manage it, you can actually group it that way. And I can create as many lists that I need to as a manager of my sales team or of myself as a sales manager to know exactly what I'm looking for. It's an important reminder for any CRM, it's critical to simply put the proper data in there. So if we click into any property, for anyone that's tied to sales, we need to make sure we keep this updated and thorough as possible. So again, we go into our pencil, and to create any list, we want to make sure we have as much accurate data as we can. So we already talked about changing your property status here. If we go into our second tab, we want to talk about the lead source. What type of industry are we classifying this as? This is our custom list. Uh, we already talked about tags and then maybe you know your annual budget already. And then the competitor. So these are other options that allow you to do search functions based off of these. And again, any CRM will make sure that your 
putting this information in as accurately as possible. So if we go back and we're talking about it as a sales team and we go to our list, whatever we're looking at in our display or whatever we're grouping as, we'll see empty holes and we'll say, hey, why hasn't somebody put an industry in here? Why is this person's name missing? Let's fill that out as soon as we get that. And it allows you to actually manage your CRM flow and your sales pipeline in properties. Then when you go into your properties to search, you can create as many of those lists that make sense to you. Whether you're using cold prospects, which is already a status, or whether I go to, I wanna see just the prospects for an individual person, or I wanna use a tag, or I wanna use a custom list. Whatever it is that you wanna do, you can create those. So you don't have to keep creating them every time. You just go right to it really quickly and you say, all right, Andrea, how many prospects do you have right now? I know how many are in the pipeline. In a follow-up video from this, we're gonna talk about how this goes right into creating dashboards. But if I'm a sales manager, I'm gonna do this every week at my meeting. I'm gonna bring my team together or whoever's included. And we're gonna look exactly at these lists and we're gonna look at this, next activity, last activity. If there is no activity, this is the discussion that happens in the sales meeting. What's gonna happen next? Like, let's create a task, then let's create an appointment that we have something to do. There needs to be activity, there needs to be something, we need to have some type of notes in there. Because at the end of the day, it's about holding people accountable, know what's in the pipeline, and know what we're doing about it for next steps. So as a reminder, we looked at creating many different types of desired lists in the sales pipeline flow in properties. We talked about custom notes, property tags, managing accountabilities per account owner, and then talking about sample ideas for managing the overall pipeline and using it in your sales flow. Thank you for your time listening to this presentation of managing the sales pipeline in properties.